Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of The Studio. My name is Adam. Oh. Guys, I forgot to acknowledge the studio VIPs and studio artists, so I'm going to do that right now while I'm editing this very episode in front of you. Thank you so much to our studio VIPs, Carl Spence and Luke Uyamura. Thank you for your support. And our featured studio artist for today is Charlie Neesmith. Thank you so much for joining the family, Charlie. And if you want to become a studio VIP or studio artist, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Adam Tan, or you can click up here. Sorry about that, back to our regularly scheduled episode. This is a very special episode because we have just reached 2,000 subscribers. That is crazy. Thank you so much to you guys for getting me to 2,000 subscribers in just two months. Like we were on 1,000 in February. Remember when I did the giveaway and everything? Oh, that's insane. Seriously, I never thought I'd get this far with this channel. It really means a lot to me. So thank you and please keep watching because I'll keep making videos for you guys. Now you might notice today I'm sitting in front of a different background. It's not acoustic foam behind me. There's no marimba. It's just my desk in the studio, which I've redone recently because I have so much work to do nowadays. If you've been watching my vlogs, you'll know that this is my new setup behind me. And I thought it might be just nice to have a casual video in front of the setup. Today's video is going to be a Q and A because you guys asked me a lot of great questions, a lot of great suggestions in the comment section below. And some of the questions are really good video ideas, but I can't put them into a video because they're too short. Like there's not enough to say about that topic to make it into a full episode. So I'll answer them here instead. I hope that works for you. But thank you for sending in all these suggestions and all these questions. As always, if you want to ask me anything, leave it in the comments below. So the first question is from Andy Vo, and he says, Hey Adam, can you give a few tips on interval changes, especially with changing to octaves or keeping the mallets at an octave while playing? Thanks for the great question, Andy. I think this is a question about Steven's grip, which is my favorite four mallet grip. Now with Steven's grip, there's a lot of micro interpretations as to how to do certain things around there. Obviously the best resource is Steven's book, Method of Movement on Marimba. If you haven't already read that from cover to cover, please go check it out. It's a really good book for people learning Steven's grip. It goes into so much detail but to summarize it quickly whenever you do interval changes on marimba I find that if you use your index finger which is this finger and you roll along the index finger using your thumb like like that I don't know if you can see that when you get used to this rolling motion you can change intervals really quickly and it sort of becomes like a pair of scissors or a pair of chopsticks <laughs> you can change intervals super quickly once you get this rolling motion down pat in terms of getting into wide intervals so like when you're rolling out your thumb and your finger and you get to the point where you can't roll any further if you want it to go wider than this what I do is I get my thumb and I put it onto the inside like that and then that lets me push it just a little bit further. It's a bit cheating. I know this isn't legit. Like this is actually not a legitimate technique, but I do it sometimes whenever I'm desperate or I want an octave, like a really strong octave. I push that thumb on the inside. You can still leave your index finger on it if you've got enough of a grip, if your fingers are long enough. Put that thumb on the inside, push out, and you see how this mallet moves from here to here. So you've got that extra little bit of room for your octave. And then you can go like this and it's quite secure because your thumb is on the outside holding it in place. And because your index finger is still underneath it, it's pretty secure, see? Not too bad. If you're crazy and you still don't think this is wide enough, you can use your inside fourth and fifth finger. If you bring them out like that, it makes your mallet go just a little bit further out on the horizontal plane. So once again, from the beginning, you roll out to your maximum, your thumb goes on the inside, you push the inside mallet out that way, and then this mallet gets pushed out by the fourth and the fifth finger going out that way, and so that's how wide you get. It's a pretty, almost horizontal angle. So once again, you can go from this, to this. The most important thing is obviously getting that motion smooth. So like I do this thing where I sort of like throw the mallet sideways like, whoa, and then it becomes a <laughs> whoa. And then to go back, you swing it back, whoa. And now it's a second. Again, I don't think this is 100% legitimate in terms of technique, but it's a little trick that I use to get octaves quicker. Most of the time I won't need anything wider than this anyway. So yeah, the main takeaway is to get this rolling motion as smooth as possible. Once you get that, you can change intervals pretty quickly and pretty easily. You can even change them in steps like that. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. Get that rolling motion and use your thumb. Woo! Next question is from Ethan Blue who says, are you going to start talking more about other mallets? Chimes, Tam Tam, Tim, etc. Thanks for the question, Ethan. I probably won't be reviewing that sort of stuff because I don't have chimes or tam tam or timpani in the studio. Maybe if I go to PASIC this year, I might do a little mini review on some orchestral stuff over there. But while I'm here, probably not. Sorry. <laughs> okay, next question is from JXR12 and it says, Love the video, Adam. Keep making more. And can I have a shout out because we both have NMDs? 
NMDs are the shoes I wear on a daily basis. They're Adidas shoes, I really like them. And I believe JXR12, who is my student, also has NMDs. So can you have a shout out? Absolutely. NV7708 asks, do you write these variations that you play in the videos? So if you guys have watched any of my mallet reviews, you'll see something like variations on a theme of uh. And that's sort of like a little joke that I started very early on in the series when I noticed a lot of pieces on marimba are just called variations on a theme of followed by the artist or by the musical it's taken from. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. I just think it's a really funny thing that it's like a fancy way to say cover of this song. Pretty much anything you can think of I've made variations of. And really all these variations are, they're just the chords of the song that I'm taking inspiration from and I've just basically permutated that around the marimba with things like lateral strokes and things like that. It's nothing very complicated. So if my Patreon hits $250, I will start transcribing these. But for now, I think the best thing to do is just try and work these things out yourselves because they're actually not that tricky. Go and find the chords on the internet and just experiment on the marimba and you'll find that making these variations on a theme of is actually quite easy. Next question is from Ethan Vu who says, make a snare drum video. I chose this one because a lot of people have been asking me to make videos about snare drum, about all kinds of instruments that I don't really feature on the show, basically anything that's not marimba. <laughs> now the thing is with snare drum is that I haven't really spent that much time practicing snare drum. I mean, I can play it at like a reasonable, maybe college level, but I'm not really that good at it and I don't want to teach people the wrong stuff. So I don't really talk about snare drum very much on this channel. But if you do want snare drum advice, my friend Rob Nopper, you guys all know Rob already, if you don't, he's the percussionist in the the Met Opera Orchestra in New York City, so he's pretty legit. He's obviously recorded an entire album of the Delacluse Etudes. He's recorded all 12 Delacluse Etudes, first time ever in the world, and they sound immaculate. His Delacluse is immaculate. His snare drum rolls are like it's beautiful snare drum technique. So if you want to learn anything about snare drum, I highly recommend that you go to Rob Nopper's channel. It's also because we work together, so I'd love for you to check out his content as well as mine. So yeah, if you want to know anything about snare drum or even about xylophone, or Tam Tam, Timpani, all that sort of orchestral stuff, check out Rob's channel. I'll leave a link in the description below and you can also click up here. The next question is from Brian Cole, which says, could you do a video on mallets every perfusion? I think that's meant to say percussion. Could you do a video on mallets every percussion student should have? Our school didn't supply a list for mallets and I didn't know where to start. Thanks for the question, Brian. I'm going to tell you what I was told when I first entered university, first year university, as to what to buy. And I'll also tell you some of my own personal recommendations. So here we go. I got recommended these mallets a long time ago. I think it was about five years ago from my percussion lecturer. His name was Mr. Tim White. He was the principal percussionist for the Western Australian Symphony Orchestra for about 27 years, I think. And he was principal of every single symphony orchestra in Australia. So he's a pretty big deal, but he's also a really nice guy. So for the first instrument, snare drum, I was recommended the Vic Firth SD2 Boleros. Now the Boleros are kind of like the SD1s, which is what I have now. They're a bit smaller, but they're very cheap sticks. Overall, anything from Vic Firth is pretty affordable. But when I was in university, I preferred the SD1 General, which is about the same price as the Bolero, but it's a bit thicker. They have bigger heads, so they're a bit easier to use for buzz rolls and things like that when you're first learning how to do them. I think the Vic Firth SD1 or SD2 is actually a pretty decent stick. It'll last you for quite a long time. You'll probably use it in college, in university, as your beta stick, and you might buy better sticks down the line. Now, my wildcard pick, if you've got a little bit more money is the usual recommendation which is the Cooperman 1 Graham C. Johns. This is a really nice stick for general snare drum playing and it's just really well weighted. Like I feel this really nice weight when you're playing with this because of the persimmon wood. But if you're on a budget, I wouldn't buy these because these are like three times the price of these. I would just buy the Vic Firths first. Firths, first, first. Xylophone. Xylophone's an instrument that a lot of people will get to play when they're in high school or college or whatever. So Tim recommended for all of us to buy the IP902s, which are made by Innovative Percussion. They're called the James Rosses. They have the very famous red plastic heads and they have rattan shafts. 
it's basically like your everyday xylophone mallet. The plastic tone I think is going to be good for like your first few experiences with like excerpts or orchestral playing and they don't tend to break too easily although I did pop the heads of two pairs because I was going way too ham on those George Hamilton Green excerpts. I played a lot of George Hamilton Green when I was in undergraduate and I just hit the sticks way too hard and a lot of the heads came off. But my most recent pair which I sold off to my friend Jesse, they've been holding up for quite a while now so they're pretty decent mallets and they will last you for quite a while. They're a good safe bet for xylophone. So I would just recommend those. Now what about vibraphone mallets? Well, most people get referred the good old trusty Mike Bolter 23Rs, aka the Bolter Blues. You guys know how much I don't like these. <laughs> nah, I don't dislike them. They're actually pretty decent for the price. Mine have been through quite a lot and they can be used on marimba if you're really desperate, although I would not recommend it. These are a good just like general vibraphone mallet because they have a very simple round yarn head and they have rattan shafts which are pretty resistant to bending like these actually Actually look quite straight for something that I've bashed the living daylights out of. So yeah, I think these are a pretty decent first vibraphone mallet. If you've got a little bit more money, then I would recommend these. These are the Gary Burton M25s from Vic Firth. They're a little bit heavier, but they have more of the Burton sound of vibraphone. I don't know how to describe it, but it's just very like in your face. One thing I noticed about Gary Burton is that he plays very hard. He plays like doo -doo 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 -doo. and these mallets are great for that because they're not too articulate. They're actually a very nice sounding pair of mallets. So you got a bit more money, buy these as your first pair. And then my wildcard mallet, I would recommend the Mike Bolter 46Rs, which are the Tony Micelli, Micelli. I always pronounce it wrong. The Tony Micelli series, these are a fantastic pair of vibraphone mallets. They have this really nice rainbow head. The sound is really nice and warm, but still articulate. So if you have money, buy these. If not, buy Bolter Blues or buy the Burtons. Timpani, and as you can see from this pile of timpani mallets here, I really don't care for my timpani mallets enough. <laughs> and the only reason why I don't play that much more timpani is because there aren't many timpani jobs going around and I'm not very good at it anyway, so. But you have to play a lot of timpani in high school, in college, and university. So the sticks that I got referred were the T1 Generals, from Vic Firth, which are these things. They have the very familiar triangular stick and then the heads are a bit bigger. You can see the fluff of mine is just ridiculous. They look like clouds. The T1s are a good general mallet, as the name suggests, for all your rolls and all your very nice, warm sounding timpani stuff. Pretty decent mallet for the price. I wouldn't fault it. And the only reason why it looks like this is because I suck at taking care of timpani mallets. If you want something more articulate for your first mallet, then get the T2 Staccatos. They're more traditional. You can see the head is a lot smaller. So it's better for that sort of articulate semi-quaver sort of stuff but it's not so good for rolls because it's more like Glock mallets. Now, I don't know much about Glock mallets. I don't own any fancy clear plastic ones. The only Glock mallets I own are these, the Bolter Basic BB12s. I think they're a really well-priced brass mallet for all your crotal needs and also your pingy Glock stuff. But otherwise, yeah, I don't really know much about Glock mallets. So if you want to know about that, ask my friend Rob Nopper. Now what about marimba? Well, this one is the tricky one because marimba, there are many things to consider. As you know, my studio channel has so many review videos and that's because everyone's preference is different. Now my lecturer, Tim, used to recommend Inaki Sebastian mallets the MCS series, which I have reviewed on my channel. You can check it out over here. I think those mallets are okay, but I would personally use the Van Soysa. The Robert Van Syse series from Vic Firth is much more affordable, it's much more durable, it looks nicer, it feels nicer in my opinion. And it's a true 50-50 mallet in every single way. It's a really good beginner's mallet, it's a really good intermediate mallet, it's a really good pro mallet. It just sort of does everything for a very low price. So I think this is my favourite beginner's mallet. One of my favourite graduated sets for warmer stuff and more solo stuff is the Nancy Zeltzman Grad B series. You guys all know about this, this is one of my favourite warm mallets especially because this pink mallet is just gorgeous in the low end. So this one is a really affordable graduated set. So you guys make the choice, but for now I'm team Van Suzy. And then finally, you're gonna need a stick bag to hold all these mallets. Now I recommend getting a good stick bag for a starter. Don't just buy any foldy stick bag because foldy stick bags compress all your mallets together and they rub together. They have their advantages, like for drumsticks and stuff, I think it's really good, but for mallets with yarn, eh. My recommendation, of course, is the Galaxy Grip Bag from Humes & Berg. That is my favorite mallet bag of all time. And I've made a review on it very, very early on in the series. I think it was like episode four or five or something. You can check that out over here or in the description below. So basically, once you've got that, you've got yourself a mallet bag worth 
under 300 bucks, which covers every single aspect of your education. So not too bad, right? Thanks for the question, Brian. So I think that's enough for today's Q&A, but thank you so much for leaving me all these questions. As always, if you have anything to ask, any suggestions, anything like that, just leave me a comment in the comments below. I would really appreciate it. And I'll try and answer your question in the next Q&A. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this whole Q&A thing. I'll try and do more, but generally I do them on like milestones, like 1,000, 2,000. So maybe I'll do another one at 3,000 subscribers. Thank you once again for 2,000 subscribers. If you haven't already, please click that red subscribe button below to keep up with my uploads. I upload every week, as you know, and I make videos for you guys. Hopefully we can reach 10,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Speaking of end of the year, a few of you guys have been asking me whether I'm gonna be doing a meetup at PASIC at the end of the year. Now, I'm still like 75% sure I'm going to PASIC, but obviously that depends on the availability of flights and stuff because I live in Australia, which is like 30 hours away from Indianapolis. 30 hours away. So let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see any meetup at PASIC because I would be more than happy to do one if enough people want to go. And if not, you're going to meet me there anyway, so... As always, if you want to get one of these hoodies, you know where to find them in the description below. And I will see you next week for another episode of... The studio. Thank you so much for watching and good night.